Knowledge Area PMP Exam Summaries Project Communications Management Communications management is one of those areas on the PMP exam that you need to pay close attention to majorly because everything in a project manager's world revolves around communicating. To glean information, the PM must communicate. To work on the charter with others, the project manager must communicate. When it comes to controlling risks, schedule, cost, scope, and other areas, again, the project manager must communicate. It's estimated that the project manager spends 70 to 90 percent of the time communicating. On the PMP exam, you can expect a lot of questions that anchor communications to other areas, especially stakeholder management, where there is a problem or a concern with a stakeholder, the project manager needs to communicate. How do issues get put into the issue log? It's through communicating. How does conflict get resolved? Through communicating. How do you develop the team? How do you manage the team? Communicating. How do you manage stakeholder engagement? Communicating again. So you can see that there is a thread throughout all of these areas that hinges on project communications management. And that's why on your exam, you can expect a lot of the questions to be crafted around this knowledge area, perhaps being a blend of more than one knowledge area. In the world of communications management in PMI, first thing as usual is to first of all plan. What are we going to communicate? How are we going to communicate? Why do we need to communicate this? And when do we need to communicate? The major output of planned communications management is a communications management plan. I am of the opinion that communications needs to be taken pretty seriously because the project manager spends 70 to 90 percent in many approximations from professionals communicating. So I'm going to ask my budding project manager here who wants to manage projects what exactly she thinks about communicating. Is communicating easy or difficult for people? It's actually very easy now that we have the modern new cell phones. Now we can easily communicate with each other so that we don't have to do it the old fashioned way. Well, thank you very much for that, buddy and project manager. I totally agree with what you've said in that we look around today and we see people communicating predominantly on their smartphones, people spending upwards of five hundred, six hundred dollars for unlocked phones, one thousand dollars if you're on the iPhone X or such, people use these devices to communicate. They send emails, they create videos, they have web meetings, web conferences, and that is the new face of communicating, like it or not. Now, I'm not saying traditional methods aren't important. Of course, they are still important, but a lot of times companies just cannot afford to send people on long trips thousands of miles away to communicate. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary, but other times we can use things like email, chat, video conferencing, and so on. So that is the new phase of communicating on a lot of projects. In PMI's world, we need to understand that communications could be in a variety of dimensions and flavors. Not only do we need to remember email, not only do we need to remember face-to-face, -face, but any technologies and any approaches that work for the team and stakeholders. In this particular process, we think about communications as being three-pronged. It could be interactive, 
It could be push communication and it could be pull communication. When we talk about interactive, we're talking about real-time communication. When we talk about push communication, it could refer to just pushing out emails. As my budding project manager alluded to, this may not always be the best approach because people don't read emails all the time. People don't read newsletters that you send out. And we also have pull communication where you leave the recipient or the second person in the communication to pull the information as needed. So you do need to know who you're dealing with. Now, when we talk about communications, we talk about the models, communication models, sender receiver models, and all of this stuff is important for your exam. One of the questions that you typically should expect is the number of channels of communicating. We should ask the question, how many channels of communication will there be if everyone is left to communicate with everyone else? The formula is n times n minus 1 divided by 2, but let me say that this particular formula is not always delivered in questions as a straight application. In order to do well, you need to remember that the project manager sometimes may or may not be included in the question. If you're given a question that says, on a team of five, how many channels of communication are there? It's obvious that everyone has been counted. But if you have a question that states, a project manager with a team of five, is communicating, then you know that the project manager has not been counted. And therefore, n will be 6. So n times n minus 1 divided by 2 should be applied accordingly. Also, as part of planning communications management, we get our major output, the communications management plan. Who are we going to communicate with? Why? When? What are the details of the message? How frequently should communications be sent out to stakeholders? These are all questions that are answered as part of this process. Moving on to our next process, it's manage communications. In this process, this is where we actually carry out the communications. This is where you would get your work performance reports, from the monitor and control project work process and actually send them out. So you send those out to your stakeholders. You also employ performance reporting as a technique of sorts to report on performance. And ultimately, you will have all manner of project communications. All of this information needs to be stored accordingly in an information management system. As this information is stored, it becomes available for future reference. And as we do this, we also want to be aware of our stakeholders view on our communication effectiveness, which takes us to the next process of control communications, where we should ask the question, did we do a good job? Is our communications management plan working or not? Are people getting the communications they want when they want it? And if the answer is no, then we need to go back to the drawing board and tweak our communications management plan to be more inclusive or exclusive or whatever it needs to and tweak it to the point that everyone is happy. Make sure that the stakeholders are getting exactly what they need, when they need it, and are not getting too much communication. This area is big on the exam because everything revolves around communications. The project manager spends 70 to 90% of the time communicating. Why did I say at the very beginning that we shouldn't forget the traditional methods? Professor Emeritus Albert Morabian carried out an experiment at UCLA way back in time in the 60s 
and came out with some findings about communicating in an interactive fashion and how much of that communications could be perceived by the words versus the tone of voice versus the body language. And at the end of the experiment, he came to find out that in an interactive communication session, only 7% of the message is perceived by the words. 55% on the flip side is perceived from the body language and 38% by the tone of voice. So body language and tone of voice trump it all. I didn't mean to scare you. I was only calling your attention to the fact that tone of voice could be extremely important as you communicate. Well, talking about communications, I think this session has run its course. Don't forget, if you're studying for the PMP exam, the PMI focus heavily on executing. So you want to make sure that you cover managed communications and all those other processes within executing very carefully. I would recommend spending a lot of time with the terrible three from HR, acquire, develop, and manage project team, as well as manage communications, manage stakeholder engagement, direct and manage project work, perform quality assurance, conduct procurements, all that good stuff from executing. Low-hanging fruit, folks. I hope that gave you some clarity on communications. Just remember that communicating is very wide it's vast, and the questions could come in a variety of flavors. I would suggest that you open up the PMP exam content outline and mine deep in the executing, planning, and monitoring and controlling areas to glean what exactly is expected from you in more detail. If this video was of help to you, share it with someone else studying for the exam, give a thumbs up. Before I got on this particular module, I got some very good feedback from a student from Deluxe who was able to crush the exam today with above targets in every single area. How cool is that? Well, Christina, I don't think you're going to be listening to this, but if your colleagues are, they can tell you I tip my hat to you. Well done. If you're looking to ace the exam as she did, why don't you shoot us an email or just visit praiseon.com. Don't forget to hit subscribe and don't forget to share this with other PMs trying to get certified. Thank you for your audience and bye for now.